I was talking with uh, the novelist and your great collaborator about what she wanted to do with this book. And she said it was very important for her to write the screenplay herself because she was afraid of what the movie could become. She didn't want it to be kind of an over-the-top stalker film or a kind of superhero mom story. I read the book. I loved it. Um, my own little boy was the same age or roughly as Jack, and so I was sort of wide open to this beautiful character. And I just decided I would tell her because we knew the book was quite a big deal and we thought our chances would be pretty slim. But at the same time, I thought, well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And at least if I have to sit in a cinema watching somebody else's version of it, and I couldn't quite decide which would be worse, if it was great or if it was awful. I didn't know which I would hate more. <laughs> um, I think if it was great, I, to be perfectly honest, I would hate that even more. Um, but uh, so I wrote her this letter, and I think what I said in it was, yeah, it, it happened to me in keeping with what she thought, which was that that we should use as little as possible in terms of trickery or, or very overt technique to, to still keep this the boy's story, but to do it very naturalistically so that all of the other aspects that are so, so beautifully there, you know, the, the metaphorical aspects and the things that make the story about childhood and, and love and being a parent and growing up, that that would all be there, but, but be there very delicately. And I, I think talked about the same fear that you could either make this a bleak true crime story or a kind of voyeuristic story, or you could end up with something very sappy and right. sentimental. And luckily, she, she was, we were both kind of on the same page. Funny, when I read it, I had very, very vivid pictures in my head as I read it, even from early on in the novel. Once I kind of worked out what she was doing and that, that you had this hopeful little child in the middle of this very dark world. And I had very strong images of what, of what the two of them would look like together and how we could kind of move from a very intimate connection to his way of seeing things to, to more of a God's eye view and, and more of a Ma's eye view. But I, but I felt very strongly that so much of it would really be there in the, in the pictures. And, and that we sometimes, de we sometimes diminish the, the power of our own medium by thinking, oh, well, literature has all these kind of descriptive devices and it has this ability to like absolutely tell you what it wants to tell you in a way that film doesn't. But actually, we have faces and we have passage of time and the atmosphere in the room and, and, and the sort of palpable feeling between Brie and Jake. And so my, my pitch and my guess was that, that we could capture that point of view, but we could do it in film's terms and it would still... With, with lots of reconfiguration and stuff, but, but, but actually, you know, I think people were coming in and saying, oh, well, you can't just be there in the room with them. You will have to intercut. You'll have to like flash uh, flashbacks to or, or you'll have to find some device to capture the first person thing. You'll have to allow for their, you know, use little bits of CG or like really put the magic out there into the picture. But again, I don't think that would have been as powerful as just really believing these characters. Well, I didn't have any answers to anything, which is my favorite way of going into something, is feeling a little, this excitement, because there's so much unknown and a lot of fear that goes along with this, of this constant sort of, can we do this? And can we, can we tell this honestly? Can we respect the material? Do we have the knowledge to fully understand this? There's so many factors in this story that are, un, that are so outside of our daily lives. But the thing in exploring it further and going through all of these long conversations, many philosophical conversations, and then many factual conversations with experts that knew what would actually be happening in this type of situation, we were then able to find the universal. And that was always the heart of it, was how do we, instead of making this something that's bizarre, we make it something that's very much like home. And so the two of us were a great balance because I've only been a child, but I have a very close relationship to my mother and I am, I'm very curious about my mother and our relationship. And so I had a lot of thoughts about it and a lot of thoughts about Ma as joy and what that relationship would be like at home. But the, the, that sort of complicated, tangible relationship between Ma and Jack that's in room when you see them together, that was, that was more of Lenny's creation and helping me understand because I haven't been through it. So we became a great balance that I could sort of be an expert on one half of it and he could be one on the other and we could combine those, those two.
But when you're, uh, I'm curious about what you're talking about is when you talk about your mom, with whom you're really close, when you are doing a role like this, you are invariably are kind of thinking about your own childhood. About a month before I, we started shooting, I had decided to take um, about a month to just be at home and see what it felt like to quiet my mind and have no real distractions that were outside of doing these really difficult workouts that were exhausting and having my six meager meals a day um, that I was doing on this diet to sort of slim down. And and so in that quiet, I rem remembered when I was seven years old and my mom packing up our old Mercedes and driving from Sacramento to Los Angeles. And we it was me, my mom, and uh, my sister was like three or four. And we had almost nothing. I mean, we had a couple pairs of pants each, a couple shirts. I think my sister each... We each had a toy, and we lived in a space that was not much bigger than room, maybe twice twice the size. But room's not that big, so twice the size is not a lot of space. <laughs> there was a bed that came out from the from the wall. A Murphy bed. It was a Mur yeah, yeah, a Murphy bed. But if the bed came out, that was it took up pretty much all the room. Um, but I remembered it as being one of the greatest times of my life. It was one of my fondest memories of. I really related to when Jack says, oh, you know, room went in every direction and never stopped. That's how I felt about that. Just the power that. of imagination. Yeah, power because of my, my mom was able to take these small things that we had, these couple of toys and these four walls and turn it into something that was just magical. And I had my mom all to myself. And that was the greatest gift of all, is that she was my hero. And I got to see her do all these cool things all the time. And um, one aspect that I had I guess shut out because I knew I wasn't supposed to know about it was I we all three slept in this same bed and I remembered waking up in the middle of the night to my mom and these choking sobs covering her mouth so that I couldn't hear and uh, I knew not to say anything and um, I just remembered thinking oh, this reminds me of what it's like to have my toys taken away and uh, it wasn't until I don't know. I mean, uh, I guess I knew some pieces of the story, but I didn't know the full scope of it until much later in my life where I realized that the move was sort of inspired by my dad asking for a divorce. And my mom packed up our car with a couple thousand dollars in her pocket, knowing nobody in Los Angeles. And her reaction to it, instead of being sort of down and out about it, was to create this very big world for us that then was a world that she could, it was a projection that she could live in. And it was such an aha moment for me of, oh, that's my end to this story. And this is how I know that there's a universal nature to it because I lived it. And now I can actually go back and relive this memory, but through my mother's eyes. And and it brought me so much closer to her. I mean, I called her every couple of days sobbing, just like I'm on my knees begging for forgiveness for all of the things that I didn't know that you can't know as a kid, but that you hate that you didn't know. When you're thinking about that and you meet Jacob Tremblay, who plays your son in this film, what was that experience like and what were the concerns that you had in playing the mother to this boy that you've never met? My concern was that he wasn't going to like me. <laughs> that was it, because kids are so simple. And I think the reaction is so visceral and comes from the expression on your face and where your lines are and the way your face kind of illuminates when you're happy. Um, I, I know that, that it's so it's so simple for them. And so I couldn't do any trickery. I couldn't, this was not someone who was like my age that I could be like throw around, you know, some cool references <laughs> and hope that it worked out and go get a drink together. This is a child who's just going to pick up on my immediate energy. And the only thing that I could do was just drop any facade possible and just play. And it worked really well. I'm really glad that we got on so well and very quickly became became comrades and became such partners during the making of this movie. And our relationship was so purely loving and helpful for one another. And we enjoyed every second we spent together that I remember distinctly uh, maybe a month and a half into shooting where he was like really confused as to who I was to him. Like, did not, and that's where the term coworker came from. Because then it was like, okay, great, we're working together. He's my coworker. Because I was his friend, and he would get confused sometimes by that. I'm like, well, I don't want to yell at Brie. He'd be like, no, that's Ma. And it was like having these moments of him going, 
We do everything together. We play together. We have lunch together. We have breakfast together. She knows all of my siblings. She's part of my family. She's my friend, but she's also playing my mom. Who is this person in my life? And so we had to just kind of shake hands on coworker, and then it became very easy that we could be like, great job, coworker. <laughs> it was a very simple way of going about things.